out of school 41 years and going back to get a GED was very frightening. Um, first of all, my age was a factor and my brain seemed kind of tired and I had a fear. I was called into the ministry. In order to be a good minister, um, you have to have schooling. And uh, I could not get into seminary without my GED. And when I first called uh, the GED program, I was very ashamed because I was a businesswoman and I did not want the lady to know who I was because most of the people in the area knew me and I knew that it was a possibility that she might know me. And so I began to cry on the telephone and I told the lady, I cannot tell you who I am because I am a businesswoman. And she said, you wait just one minute. She said, I have presidents of, of major corporations. I have CEOs that have not gotten a GED. Uh, they're striving to get their GED. She said, the, the shame of it would be is if you didn't get it. The test was hard, but if you study, it's like anything else in life. You make what you get, you get what you make. If you don't study, you won't do good. If you study, you'll do good. Hi, I'm Martin Mapoma, host of the GED Connection writing programs. As an actor on stage, television, and film, I rely on good writing to create a good story, great characters, and believable dialogue. The GED Language Arts Writing Test covers aspects of effective writing that are important, whether you're writing a TV screenplay, or an office memo. Other programs in the GED Connection Writing Series will help you build your writing skills. In this program, we focus on the test itself, what's expected, the format, and some test-taking strategies. For more instruction and practice, read the chapter on passing the GED writing test in your writing workbook, and visit the GED Connection part of the PBS Literacy Link website. The writing test has two parts. In addition to answering multiple choice questions, you're required to write a brief essay at the testing center. Well, there's all different kinds of, of uh, questions about like punctuation, periods, chords, and uh, paragraphs, and uh, how to break up different sentences with commas and semicolons and different things like that. So that's the first part, what I call the structured part of it. The second part of the test was more essay. And you're given a topic and you need to write about that topic. When you go in to take the writing skills test, you'll have one booklet, and it'll have the multiple choice pieces and the essay, and it's one time period. You do the multiple choice first, and you can take as long or as little time as you need to complete the multiple choice, but when there are only 45 minutes left in that testing situation, the examiner will say, you have 45 minutes left to complete this test. If you haven't started your essay yet, you must do it now. At this particular uh, testing center, I had a, we had wonderful people. Lisa and Greg was, was their name. It was a lot of people, a lot of young people. I didn't realize that that many young people hadn't got their high school diploma. They tell you what to expect about the test. They tell you about the time of the test. And then you're given a, the test, a pencil, and some scratch paper. The one thing I liked about the testers, uh, they gave you time. It was a time, and they would, uh, you know, they would let you know you have 15 minutes left, you have five minutes left. And so if you were slow and lacking in any part of it, you know, it made you, gave you time to get it together and move on. You'll use the same skills and knowledge on both parts of the test but in different ways. Writing an essay means organizing your thoughts, constructing sentences that are clear and complete, and showing you have some knowledge of grammar and usage. It's really very similar to what you do on part one of the test. The only difference is, is that on part one, you're revising and correcting an existing document. The documents used in the test are similar to those you encounter on the job or in daily life, like business memos, letters, and how-to documents. Here's an example. To all employees of Acme Manufacturing, from Brenda Fisher, Safety Coordinator. Date, November 11th, regarding Annual Safety Counts Campaign. Our Annual Safety Campaign will begin Monday, beginning with a safety meeting for all employees at 10 a.m. in the large conference room. Everyone who works here know that Acme is a company that makes safety its top priority. There were 19 on-the-job injuries in the past year. To look for ways to reduce this number, 
a committee of employees studied workplace safety and attended national workshops on accident prevention. In addition, they attended seminars on productivity, which many members found particularly enjoyable. In the coming week, we will hold safety meetings and a safety slogan contest. We will be, if everyone makes an effort, able to reduce injuries and make our company a safer place to work. The best way to begin is by reading the entire document as if you were editing something you just wrote. Ask yourself, does it make any sense? Is the main idea clear? Are there any errors? How could it be better? Being familiar with the entire document will help you answer the questions. Let's try one. Sentence one and two. Our annual safety campaign will begin Monday, beginning with a safety meeting for all employees at 10 a.m. in the large conference room. Which is the best way to write the underlying portion of these sentences? If the original is the best way, choose option one. One, Monday, period. New sentence, beginning with two. Monday, comma, beginning with three. Monday, period. New sentence, to begin with four. Monday, period. New sentence, having begun with five. Monday, with. When you read the memo, you may have noticed that sentence two is actually a sentence fragment. The thought is incomplete. You do need to correct the sentences so you can eliminate answer option one. If you chose option three or four, sentence two would still be a fragment, so you can eliminate those options too. Option two and five both combine the sentence fragment with the sentence one, but which is the best way? Read the sentence using the answer options. Option two would read, our annual safety campaign will begin Monday, beginning with a safety meeting for all employees at 10 a.m. in the large conference room. The word beginning is unnecessary, since you've already said the campaign begins. So option five is the best answer. If you had trouble with that question, you might want to review sentence fragments and run on sentences. You'll be asked to spot and correct them in part one of the test. And in your essay, you'll want to make sure that you write complete sentences. Every sentence should have verb and a subject. And those are the two main things in a sentence. They create the action, they show the main points of the sentence. Clarity just means being clear. And I think that if you relax a little bit and you think not so much about rules and being wrong as you do about being clear and giving the reader what they need, um, then I think that you relieve a lot of the anxiety that most people feel about using language. In the case of sentence fragments, um, that means remembering that a part of a sentence, an incomplete part of a sentence, which we call a fragment, is probably going to make what you say not clear. I guess if there's a complete thought there and you can kind of visualize it, then it's a good sentence. A run-on sentence happens if you take all these independent sentences, all these thoughts that stand on their own, and just Stick them together into one huge sentence. I can't go, you can use my ticket, the concert is Friday, it begins at 8. There are no commas, there are no conjunctions, there are no subordinating words that show dependency or relationship. You just have a lot of ideas all stuck together. It's very hard for the reader to know where one thought starts, stops, and the next one starts. Let's try another question related to sentence structure. Sentence 8. We will be, if everyone makes an effort, able to reduce injuries and make our company a safer place to work. If you rewrote sentence eight, beginning with the phrase, if everyone makes an effort, the next word should be, one, able we will be. Two, we will be able. Three, making our company. Four, reducing injuries will make. And five, injuries reduce and company make. This question basically asks you to rewrite the sentence. How would you express this thought if you were writing the memo? Try it. Does what you come up with fit any of the answer choices? The revised sentence should have the same meaning as the original sentence, but be clearer. Look at the answer options in relation to what is left in the original sentence. Option one, if everyone makes an effort, able we will be to reduce injuries and make our company a safer place to work. The thought is there, but the construction seems a little awkward. How about two?